was my friend. What do you want from me? I want to help you. Let's go get some lunch. I have to get into another line. <laughs> Anything for me? <laughs> yeah, you take the bills. I have to go home. They sent you a letter? Not my home, Paul Forrester's home. What? Listen, dear Paul, it's very important that I see you. You know I wouldn't ask if it weren't, so please try to make it home for Christmas. I'm counting on you. Thank you. Love, Mother. This is typed. Uh, anybody could have sent this. She's got her name printed on the paper. Stella Forrester. Fox works for the government. I mean, they print the money. They could sure as heck have some stationery printed. You don't know the first thing about Forrester's mother. I mean, you'd never pull it off. She needs her son. Besides, there's no place like home for the holidays. But you don't even know them. Wouldn't you come and see me if I needed your help? Of course, you're my father. Would you help me even if I weren't your father? You have a talent for unfair questions, you know. Make that ten dollars even. Great car. I could get you a couple thousand for it if you were interested in selling it. Oh, thanks. It's just what we need. Mm. Can you tell me how to get to 211 Union Street? Yeah, go down two stoplights and take a left. Thank you. Everything OK, Ted? Hey, Dave. How's it going? Who is that? Looks familiar. Not from around here. I want to know how to get out to Stella Forrester's place. Paul Forrester. Got to bring her something. I mean, uh, that much I know. You can't show up empty-handed, especially at this time of the year. Okay, I'm convinced. Have you got any ideas? Antiques. Old folks love antiques. Could I see that? It's from the 1890s. The face of the man on the moon was very popular then. And it has uh, that little star there. It was an earring originally, but since there was only one, I had it made into a key ring. I know just you should have this. <laughs> How much? In the spirit of Christmas, I can let you have it for $50. Out of my league. Thanks. Yeah. 
Why is it that all the good stuff is always so expensive? Well, that's a universal law. Yeah. Flowers. You can't miss with flowers. Women love flowers. I don't know why, but they go nuts over them. Well, I can explain it to you, but I think you're too young. Yeah. Anyway, they're waiting up here. <laughs> Howdy, boys. Hi. Is it uh, poinsettia or poinsettia? <laughs> poinsettia. It's your traditional Christmas plant. And at $9.95, it's a real good deal. Well, that's nice. We'll take it. Out of 20. You want it delivered? We deliver. No, we'll take it ourselves. We're going to Stella Forester's. That's just up the street, isn't it? You boys uh, buying that for Stella Forester? Do you know her? Not many people in this town don't. On the house. On the house? That woman has done more for ironwood than the people can ever repay. Just tell her Milt said, Merry Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Milt. Merry Christmas. Here, let me put a nice ribbon on that. <sighs> ironwood. This is a nice place to be from. Well, Officer Winfield. Well, I guess it doesn't surprise me, but I always thought you were destined for bigger stuff. Isn't this kind of slim pickings? These boys didn't have anything to do with it, Dave, and you know it as well as I do. You know who's responsible. And if you don't stop it pretty quick, somebody's going to get hurt. I'd love to take you apart right this minute. But I tell you what. In the spirit of the holiday season, I'm going to give you till Christmas Day. If you're not out of town on the 26th, I'm going to shove that smile down your commie pinko throat. I get the feeling I know that guy. Leave the flowers here. You can get them later. You don't want your hands full when you're going to say hello. Besides, we may have to run for it. Now, my approach would be to have as many distractions as possible so she doesn't notice that you're not her son. Like, for example, if we'd brought a string of elephants and tigers, that would have... I've got his act down. Just trust me. Dad, it's one thing to fool a cop you haven't seen in years, but, I mean, this lady, she's your... Well, she's his mother. I don't understand how you can be so cool. I'm not so cool. I have bluebirds in my stomach. Yeah, you and me both. I see we hang you in and blow this bird. We're not going to hang you, and we're not going to blow this bird until we meet Paul's mother, my mother. Good luck. You certainly deserve it. Yes? Mother, it's me, Paul. What the hell are you doing here? I got your letter. What letter? What are you talking about? I came home because you asked me to. You said you needed me. I never asked you to come here. But I got this. Not for me, you didn't. Then you don't want to see me? As long as you're here, why don't you come in and take your things? Sure, that's a good idea. That way, neither of us will have to worry about you coming back. Your stuff's in the attic. The attic? Well, you didn't expect to come back and find everything where you'd left it, did you? Well, I suppose not. Where do you want this wood, Stella?
It's me, Paul. Hal Walker. I guess you're a little surprised to see me here. No. Uh, no. Well, the way you looked, I wasn't sure. You may not approve, but your mom and me, uh, well, we, we mean a lot to each other. You don't have to explain anything to him. If he'd had anything to say, he should have said it 17 years ago. 17 years? Has it been that long? Why don't you just go up and take what you want and get out? I want to talk to you. Oh, Dad, we don't need all this stuff. Uh, let's just hit the road, okay? What did he say? He said we don't need all this stuff. Don't sass me, Paul Forrester. What did he call you? Dad. Scott called me Dad. He's my son. You must favor your mother. It's, it's getting late. You and your son may as well stay for dinner. We'd love to. Why is my mother acting like this? Well, that's easy. She's not your mother, and you're not her son. She's probably figured all that out by now. She's rejecting her son, not me. The question is, why? That was Milt Linden. He's pretty upset about the window. That makes three. Now, when folks are afraid of losing their jobs, they get restless, Coot. I don't approve of it. I'm going to put a stop to it, but I understand it. What are you doing? Refreshing my memory about a bad penny that just turned up in town. Paul Forrester? Stella Forrester's kid? Yeah. The big magazine photographer. Flag burning? I don't get it. What's the big deal? Why don't they make you punks learn something about history? Run this guy through the computer. See if there's old warrants or speeding tickets. I need an excuse to bust him. You old busybody. Why couldn't you have the good sense and let the past day bury it? Oh, you know, I'm just trying to help you, sweetheart. This thing between you and your son... It... What's between Paul and me has suited both of us just fine for a long time. We don't need an old goat like you telling us what to do. Correct? I'm not sure. You haven't changed an iota, have you? If I'd said it was night, you would have put on sunglasses. Excuse me. No offense, but that mother of yours could give stubborn lessons to a mule. Now, if I put my foot in it, I apologize, but it just didn't seem right that you two don't make up. It's not as easy as you think. Oh, too much pride, huh? Let me tell you something. You get to be my age, you can look back and see what pride cost you. And you wonder, maybe, was it worth it? Just think about that. I will. We got these for you. I was afraid they'd get too cold in the car. Needs water. Well, thank you, Scott. It's, it's lovely. The man at the flower shop said to wish you a Merry Christmas, and he also said that you've done more for this town than anybody else. Some people would say I've done too much. I guess I'll go back inside. No, no, wait a minute. What grade are you in? Ninth. How are you doing? Not bad. Uh, badly. 
Do ninth graders still read? Or does the whole class just sit in front of a big television set? I just finished reading Catcher in the Rye. I liked it. Oh, you enjoy books. How novel. <laughs> that was a good one. Novel, books, it's a good pun. Do you enjoy music, too? Yeah, yeah, I, I love Mozart. Well, I'm into the Stones myself. <laughs> You're kidding. Hey, check this out. Why would she keep one mitten if the other one was lost? Well, by the looks of this place, she saved everything Paul Forrester ever touched. Yeah, I guess you're right. The sock doesn't have a mate either. Well, that's because it's a Christmas stocking. She probably made it's it for you. Hang by the chimney with care. <laughs> I knew that. Well, I'm never sure. You have a Christmas stocking? Well, I guess I had one once. But you can't outgrow that stuff, you know. I guess the fat man is going to have to give your presents to someone else, then. Well, it doesn't have to be all fancy like that, I mean. In an emergency, any sock will do. Do you understand? Hmm. <laughs> kind of a scrawny-looking kid. Not so scrawny. Well, I guess for you, it's like reading the history of your body. You can read the history of a body in the body, if you know where to look. I'm trying to find out what happened between Paul and his mother. Bingo. This doesn't make any sense. These are probably peace protesters. Um, what happened was there were a lot of people who didn't think our country should be fighting a war. And so they had rallies. You know, the cops would come and bob them on the head. I've only read about this stuff. I'm probably not explaining it very well. You're explaining it very well. It just doesn't make any sense. What happened doesn't make any sense. Well, when Forrester got involved with this, his parents must have freaked. They probably kicked him out and told him never to come back. Seventeen years is a long time not to come back. It took you 14. Hal's picking me up in a few minutes. I don't suppose it matters to either of you, but Sunday still means something to some people. Yeah, Sundays. I mean, big dinners, and color newspapers, sports on television. And church. Oh, yeah, that too. Don't tell me you're going to church now. Sure. All the time. Well, don't be late. Your hair sticking up in back, Scott. As the tiny hand of the infant reached out from the manger nearly 2,000 years ago, it touched the world with a spirit of peace and forgiveness. We celebrate that same spirit here today. And the lesson is the same. Love thy neighbor as thyself. O oh Lord, in the spirit of this holy season, let forgiveness be our Christmas gift to each other. Hi, Sam. Vera. Your sermon was very moving, Reverend, but what's happened to this town ain't no fairy tale, and it ain't gonna have no fairy tale ending. Sam, it's Christmas. Sam, let's go home. That's all I said what's on my mind. If that referendum passes, the mill is just gonna shut the doors, and we're gonna have trouble in this town like you've never seen. Sam, for heaven's sakes, that referendum only says you've got to stop using Sutter Creek like a sewer. It does not make sense to go on poisoning your own drinking water. Linda, I've heard about enough out of you. Sam, I just stop it. It's Christmas, for heaven's sake. Are you two boys have known each other since you were in diapers. 
Well, we've had hard times before, but we've always pulled together and found a way out of our troubles. Merry Christmas. Come on. How can this town come apart like this? He didn't mean anything against you personally, Stella. Oh, I don't blame Sam. He's afraid of losing his job. But if we don't stop pulling in different directions, we're going to pull this town apart. Yeah. Now, that is incredible. Well, nothing to it. Just flour and eggs. I could make you into a first-rate pancake cooker in about ten minutes. Are you serious? You mean I could make these by myself? I expect you could. You know, I've got a busy day today. Want to come? Um, no, I've got to do something. What are you doing? I'm going to round up a few old souls who remember this town the way it was. Back when we used to care for each other and when we'd, we'd all pitch in and try to make things better. <laughs> and then what? But there's a town meet at night. And I'm going to see if an old woman can breathe some life into this town before it dries up and blows away. I, I gotta go. Well, you should change gears in a hurry. Thanks for the breakfast. Any time. Morning. What happened to Scott? Gone with the wind. He didn't get that from any stranger, did he? Like son, like father. Do you have anything to put under this? Pancakes. Well, he's a nice boy. I don't know how it happened exactly, but he is nonetheless. Scott said that someone was here looking for me. A fellow from Washington about three months ago. I told him the last place on earth that he could expect to find you was here. You're in trouble, aren't you? Yes. Same old charge, 1969? Yeah, I thought so. Well, your father never forgave you, I know that. Seems like the government would have dropped it after all these years. What about you, Stella? Why can't you forgive me? I never gave a damn about those charges, you know it. I stood up for you through, through the whole business. It's not what sticks in my craw. Sit down and drink your juice. that way, Scott. That's just what your father used to do. I did? <laughs> Mark, the herald angel, sing. I thought you'd gotten lost in the attic. It wasn't in the attic. It was in the basement, like I told you, in the first place. Well, come on, come on. I've got all night. Well, don't blow a gasket. <laughs> There. Ta-da! Well, I'll go and get the dinner started. Yeah, I grated the uh, carrots and I bought those raisins you told me to get. Oh, good. Scott, let's go for a walk. But it's almost dinner. Then we'll make it a short one. You like Stella a lot, don't you? Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but it's almost like she's really my grandmother. I like her, too. I'm glad we had a chance to meet her. I can't change Paul Forrester, what he did. I can only try to understand it before it's too late. Too late for what? Paul Forrester died before the wound between them healed. But if I hurry, I can make peace between them before Stella dies. What are you saying? She's not even sick. Yes, she is. No mistake.
Why are you crying? Because somebody I care about is going to die. Don't they cry where you come from when somebody dies? No, they don't. Well, why not? Where I come from, it's, it's just simpler. Take a favorite book, Catcher in the Rye. Yeah, so? Well, when you were reading the book, you enjoyed it. But when you were finished, you weren't happy and you weren't sad. You were just finished with that book. Do you understand? No, when I like a book, I want it to go on forever. I don't want it to end. But what you like about that book does go on forever because it became a part of you. Well, I knew I couldn't explain it. Well, it's kind of hard to figure out what to get somebody when you haven't seen them for a long time. Yeah, but Stella won't care. It isn't the gift. It's the idea behind it. My goodness, he's happy that you're back. I'm not so sure about that. Believe me, if she wasn't so stubborn, she'd admit it. Look, you sure turned out different than I expected. In fact, it's hard to match up what I see with what I heard. Wow. Uh, look at all this interesting stuff. Maybe there's something in here. You could buy her a nice diamond ring. You know what, with inflation, it might run to eight or nine hundred dollars, but it would certainly be appropriate, wouldn't it? I thought that diamonds were for weddings. You really don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Seventeen years is a long time. But it's hard to believe that you could forget how you got your first camera how Stella hocked her engagement ring to get it for you. Oh, yeah, yes, of course. <clears throat> That's how I got started. I mean, if Stella hadn't sold a ring, I might be a lawyer or something stupid like that. Hey, look at that. Why, it's the size of a credit card. How can they make a radio that small? Well, actually, um, elves. Huh? Tiny little... Elves. <laughs> Elves. <laughs> what is it for? Oh, it's about Stella not being well. I thought you knew. Isn't that why you wrote? I wanted you to, uh, to make peace. That's why I wrote it. Now, it's obvious Dave can't handle the job. Now, just a damn minute, Cecil. You won't do anything, Dave, because you side with him yourself. You want to blame me and Art and Luann for something that the people at the mill are bringing on themselves. Hold on a minute. The people at the mill didn't do anything like that at all. Okay. Okay. Hey, come on, what do you expect them to do with people at the mill? Can, can we do what they've always done for years and years? Anything on themselves. The people at the mill are trying to save their jobs. Merry Christmas, everyone. All right, uh, hold it down, please. Stella, you've got the floor. I'm old enough to remember most of you when you were throwing things at each other in the sandbox. And I don't see a whole lot of progress for all your years of experience. Well, there used to be a time when we could get together once in a while and set aside our squabbles and, well, and lend each other a hand. Christmas used to mean something in Ironwood. Is this about that damn tree? Yes, Sam, it's about that damn tree. We don't throw away old things and old ways for free. There's always a loss. And if the city council can't come up with a few hundred dollars to light up that tree, well, Things are starting to go one by one. No, we ain't going to call it. Come on. You stay with her. I'm going to get Doc Hartley. Don't leave me, Hal. 
You hang in, darn it. You're gonna see that Christmas tree lit if I have to set it on fire. What was it like when you were a little girl, Stella? Well, they'd come in from all over the county, horse and buggy, you know, and everybody'd pitch in. Well, you'd see folks that, that you hadn't seen since, since Easter. It took a whole day to decorate that tree, and it was a lot smaller then. <laughs> we used to snatch those candy canes off the lower branches of the tree faster than our folks could hang them up. I remember it so well. Where does all that time go? If only folks had some idea how quick time goes. Maybe there waiting for you to set the example. What do you mean? How can you expect them to forgive each other if you can't even forgive your own son? It just doesn't seem fair, does it? I know what you mean. We've known her for such a short time. Well, she's a tough old lady. Maybe she'll pull through. You don't believe that, do you? No. Get ready. A few more strokes. Maybe this will wake up some of the jackasses around here. Well, we ain't gonna have a good Christmas. They ain't either. Now, we should just be glad that we got a chance to meet her at all. I know. Thank you for, uh, twisting my arm. You sure have taken me to some interesting places. <laughs> That's what life's for. Damn! How could they? Let's just cut down the big tree out front. What are you talking about? Come on, take a look. Looks like you got Christmas mixed up with April Fools, Lonnie. I could have sworn. Special delivery for Stella Forrester. Oh, goodness. What's all this? Oh, this is just the first load. I've got to go back to the flower shop and get more. <laughs> Been working for Mr. Linden for a couple of days. A hard worker, just like his grandma. Fetch my purse. Scott, come here. Oh, I can't accept that. Don't be a goose. I have a reputation of being a good tipper, and it's a tradition I intend to uphold. Thank you. 20 bucks? Thanks, Grandma. There's some things that we may never get straight between us, Paul. But it wouldn't be right if I didn't tell you how much I appreciate you bringing that boy to see me. Sorry, he's not going to see Christmas as it used to be. When they'd light up that tree, it was, it was like a miracle. I guess we've used up all our miracles. Just little glass balls and lights. 
No, it's a bigger deal than it sounds. The main thing is that the decorations are locked in the town hall basement. Maybe somebody unlocked them. Let's go look. Are you serious? Who do you suppose is going to help us? We'll help ourselves. Just came in on your pal, Paul Forrester. Wanted for questioning by the FSA. Yes, Virginia? There is a Santa Claus. <laughs> Stella was right. This is fun. Uh, pretty nice, Paul. Amazing how that door was open. Hey, you can't do that. Sure I can. So can you. <laughs> What's going on here, Harley? Well, Dave, it seems to me folks are decorating the tree. Those ornaments were supposed to be locked up. They're city property. City's just a bunch of people with something in common, Dave. Yeah? Where'd you hear that? Well, that's what uh, Stella Forrester's boy said. It kind of makes sense to me. I don't believe this. All right, people. This is unlawful assembly without a permit. Now, I want everybody off this property immediately or you are subject to arrest. Oh, oh Dave. What? Forget what I said about waiting till Christmas. You're under arrest. It's Christmas, Winfield. Time for miracles on 34th Street. Angels with wings. Batman being pulled around by a dozen antelope. If all of that can happen, why can't we light up a Christmas tree for Stella Forrester? Huh? We could use a ladder. <laughs> Where are you going? Looks like I need reinforcements. We got an emergency here, Chief. Yeah, what is it? Somebody said they thought we might have a star missing up on top of the tree. Thought maybe we uh, ought to take a closer look. Right. <laughs> Let's run it up, boys. I figured you'd gone away without saying goodbye. Stella, they say this is a time for peace on Earth. I think there should be peace between us, too. Seventeen years without a word. I'm sorry. Weren't you sorry enough to make peace with your father on his deathbed? You wouldn't even come to his funeral. I don't understand why I did those things. But I think I must have been hurt very much. And that it took time and distance to get over the pain. Not a word. Not even a whisper. I think as the time and distance grew, it became more difficult to come back. I'm your mother. Didn't that mean anything at all to you? Maybe not then, but it does now. I can't change the last 17 years. But maybe this can make up for a small part of it. It's time you had it back. Oh. Thanks for the camera. Oh. Hey. Hi. Stella, how you doing? 
Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Grandma. Oh, thank you, Scott. Oh. But I... I have a thing to give you two. You gave Paul Forrester life. I'd be nothing without that. And you gave your love. It's the best gift of all. Thank you, Paul. And thank you, Hal, for bringing all of us together for this wonderful Christmas. How's it going? It's all set. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful, Tommy. Oh, that's just right. Now, there's a spot. There's a spot. Oh, can you reach that high? Why don't the yeah, all the carolers? Merry Christmas, Sam. Even Robert. It's a nice night. All right, everyone. Let's sing a song for Stella. Some friends, Grandma. I thought I saw the tree. Let's get. What's up? I don't think anybody saw me. I just cut the power to the center of town. They were about to turn the lights on on that damn Christmas tree. Christmas tree? What Christmas tree? The Christmas tree in the town square. Now let's get out of here. Merry Christmas. Goodbye, dear friend. I got a feeling that we're not going to see a lot more of each other. I just want to say that you're a better son than Paul Forrest ever was. Merry Christmas, Al. second, I thought I could smell pancakes. Yeah, I know what you mean. 
Thanks to you, we'll go on eating Stella's pancakes. I don't suppose there's any way we could stick around until the funeral. Dave Winfield said he ran my name through the police computer. Can't take the chance that Fox won't find out somehow. Well, it was a good thing he warned you. Yeah, that warning was a Christmas present. Speaking of Christmas presents, uh, you wouldn't want to leave yours under the tree. Well, thanks, Scott. I think there's something under the tree for you, too. Whoa. Thanks. It's to help you find your way around the stars. This is terrific. Oh, thanks. You like it? Oh, this is terrific. <laughs> what is it? It's a key ring um, to put your car keys on. There's something I have to tell you about the car. It's okay, isn't it? Oh, it's fine. It's just not ours anymore. I needed the money to buy Stella's present. I guess securing wasn't a very good present. It's the best present I ever got. It's from my son. 